is oftentimes the way it uh, gets reverted back to. So this is like uh, our, our grasses don't grow the same every month. Here's where he talked about when do we graze or how how do we know when it's best to graze? So typically a lot of our pasture grasses look like this. They might only be three, four inches tall at best. That's that's the time to take the animals out and let it grow a little taller in your foot and then put them back in. You'll get more yield if you let it go tall, like the hay, but then the quality decreases. So our quality comes down as the, the starch or the fiber increases. So this is kind of like the compromise area in here when it's about a foot tall. We can get good quality actually make it fill the relatives on those, those areas. Here's a chart to talk a little bit about what I showed in that chart earlier. This is Kentucky bluegrass. Um, I hope you've heard of that or seen that. It's probably the predominant grass in every horse pasture. Uh, I can go to any horse pasture and find Kentucky bluegrass. Um, it's often in lawns, it can handle very close grazing, uh, so it will survive when the other grasses don't. Uh, but it doesn't get very tall, you at that best it might only be a foot tall. Uh, so when I'm talking about letting your grass go to a foot tall, some, some of you are like, well how, how would that ever happen, because I've never seen it that big, because it's the type of grass, in many cases, orchard grass, will get three feet tall or, or four feet tall. Um, but these have a tendency that they don't, they produce a fair amount in the spring and they taper off come in the summer and the fall they, have, they produce more. So you can kind of see that ebb and flow with those, uh, whereas some of these clovers and I thought with those have a little more straight line uh, production across there. So there's a good reason to have clovers and, and uh, grasses in the pasture. For that rest period, how long do we give those plants time to recover? It's going to depend on the weather and what type of plants you have. Um, so, in general, as it gets drier and, and hotter, we're going to have to lengthen our rest. <coughs> you, know, you might only need two weeks in May to that grass will grow back quite quickly, but in July it might take six weeks. Uh, that's a month and a half. Uh, it's a long time to not have your animals on pasture. Uh, so you may go through all your pastures and you come back to where you're trying to go back into after three weeks and it's still only you know, a few inches tall. Um, you're best putting them on the sacrifice area for a week or two or three and feed hay rather than destroy your pastures um, for a little bit of feed that they might gain. So again, it's that seasonal grass growth, and, uh, and it might it depend on the number of days um, again. This is a similar type of thing. Typically, it'll be in that 15 to 20 day period with good growth, but then it might be 30 or 40 days in a, in a slow growth period, usually a drought, which will affect that.
base an acre this time, but next time they might make a bigger area or a smaller area so they can put these temporary posts in uh, depending on how much space they need at that time. And there's a lot of good, good equipment out there today with the ribbon and the temporary posts that uh, it's not, it's high visibility for, for horses, which is key. Um, you need to think of a way, uh, this is an alleyway, how are you going to get the animals back to the shelter, to the water, and you can make uh, temporary alleyways. Um, you may find that, uh, okay, I've done the temporary thing for a while, now I'd like to put the more permanent fence in, because I've got a, at least a, a basic, remember that picture I showed you before that had uh, the sacrifice lot down in the middle and they split it vertically. That might be a great start. Um,
pasture grass that will work in your conditions. And usually if you buy from a local uh, feed store, they're, they're marketing a, a mixture that works well with your soils in your area. Um, but usually they'll have some, some grasses and clovers, and that's, that's good. So I don't get too bogged down in which pasture mix is the best. Okay. See it, but you need to manage it. And when you reseed an area, you should actually keep the horses off for six months after you seed it. And that's where a lot of people <coughs> uh, hurt themselves. If they seed it in the spring, <coughs> even in February or March, the grass gets started, but then the horses are nimbly at that newly planted grass seed, and then their, their root systems aren't very deep. So they can literally pull that new grass shoot right out of the ground, and it never has a chance to get started. So, Never reseed the whole farm at one time because you want to have a place for to keep the horses until that newly seeded area gets established. So if you're seeding in early spring, give it to at least mid-summer until you uh, graze the horses on it. You might have to mow it a few times, but it'll help those roots get established so those new plants don't get torn out. So that's, that's my pasture seeding tip. The other interesting thing about horses is oh, these different species, cattle, sheep, goats, they want forage. 90% of the time they're going to, their diet is 90% of forage. Compared to goats, we'd rather eat brush and weeds. Uh, horses will eat 90% forage, 4% weeds, and 6% browse. Uh, so that browse is like the woody <coughs> uh, They want forage. And, uh, we don't see that in all of our pastures. Sorry. Yes? You, is this really bad, or could you put a horse together with a cow in the same pasture? Sure. Would yep. you like, so that they like, you know, balance? Yeah, they, um, I see it, I see more cows in it, and one or two horses at times. Okay. Um, as long as they get along and down. Sometimes you might think of other, you know, issues of health or nutrition, but I don't think it's a problem. Okay, so you can be multi-species. And sometimes people will, will run one group ahead or behind of another. They're not actually in the same group, but they're, they're following. But yeah, it's not uncommon to see a horse in a okay. field with, with cattle once in a while. But I mean, they can throw the goats and they eat the, eat the weeds. A little bit on pasture uh, grasses. Um, I, I don't have any bluegrass to show you, but Kentucky bluegrass is going to be in every horse pasture you encounter. Uh, it's palatable, it's nutritious, uh, it can handle that close grazing. Uh, it spreads by, uh, by tillers underground, so it'll fill in uh, bare spots and uh, it can take that close grazing. Uh, it just doesn't produce very much on an acre. You're not going to get two tons or three tons of feed off of Kentucky uh, bluegrass, more like a ton. Uh, and it doesn't like hot, dry weather, so it'll slow down and, and go dormant in the, in the hot weather. But at least it's something green and growing in the pasture. So uh, in many cases, you know, you'll end up with having bluegrass mixed with white clover in most of the horse pastures that, that I've seen. Uh, orchard grass is something you will see in, in many of your horse pasture mixes as well. Uh, bluegrass and then orchard grass. It's a taller grass. It will get, it might get shoulder high. Four feet tall is typical. Um, <coughs> here's a picture of it in, in the spring. It's more of a bunch grass, so it doesn't make a solid mat of grass. You'll have a, a clump here and a clump there. Um, and it's flat, it has a flat stem. Um, so like Timothy has a round stem, it rolls up around itself, whereas orchard grass is, is a flat one. So if you pull it out, you'll typically, one of the few that is flat, and it's really easy to identify that way. It's more uh, productive, it'll, it'll produce a lot more uh, forage, it'll, it'll yield a lot more. But it doesn't like to be grazed closely to the ground. This is one that stores most of its nutrients in its top three inches of the stem. 
take it down below that, eventually you're going to kill it, and you won't have it anymore in the pasture. But it's a good, a good pasture grass, it's a good hay, it actually grows pretty well throughout the summer. Um, so it's a, it's a good grass that's used quite a bit in uh, horse pastures and, and cattle and hay. And in legumes, here's a picture of white clover. You can't see exactly the best, but um, white clover we'll see quite often in our mixtures. Um, not usually alfalfa. Uh, there might be a small percentage of alfalfa. Uh, Ladino clover. These are small, lower growing uh, legumes. And again, the benefit of the legume is they take production. So they can, instead of adding the
I would say, however, my preferred time, if you're going to do it in the spring, is actually do it in late winter. Um, frost seeding, is that name that comes to anybody's attention? You heard that before? On the ground, honeycombs, and in the morning when it's like 20 some degrees, the ground will, will push up, and you can see the ice crystals. And if you can go out there when it's still honeycombs or frozen like that, uh, those seeds can get down in those little crevices and pockets. And as it warms up, the soil actually falls back down and, and covers up that seed. Uh, it only works well where there's exposed ground. If you're only trying to throw it where there's already grass, it doesn't work. But where, it's, where that ground is heaved, that's a great time to do it. Maybe it's March, uh, which is typically the time to do it. <coughs> Early April, um, but it kind of depends on the conditions. But uh, late February isn't, even, isn't too early to start frost seeding. Get that grass in that, it'll, it'll grow when it starts to warm up. Um, and then, most often, just a broadcast seeding outside of that time in the ground's honeycomb is fairly risky. You're not sure if it's going to take it, might or it might not, depending on how much rain we get. Um, if you do a seeding in the fall, like late August, it'll be a late summer seeding, which is the best, um, you might disturb that area with a harrow or something, try and get some loose ground. And then broadcast the seed on that area. Um, if you're going to do a complete pasture renovation where you till up the whole area, um, then you want to use a, a drill or you could broadcast, but make sure you have good seed to soil contact. That you can get the seed under the ground but not too deep. And uh, I really like late summer as a time to do a renovation if you're going to start over completely. Um, Sometimes our springs can get dry and not the best. Uh, if you have wet ground, you can't get on those fields until till May, and it gets too hot until that grass gets established. So, uh, late summer seeding is, is excellent to, to redo a pasture. I think I'm about. Yeah. Any last questions on rotational grazing or pasture management? Probably pounded down to don't overgraze things. Go ahead. <laughs>